This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Guys, this is, um, this is kind of a special, it's kind of a... Uh, uh, we're we're here. We're in the studio. It's um, what? I, who cares what day it is? Some of you guys are in the chat room, so you'll know. Um, <laughs> if you're with us, you know when it is. But uh, Joe Dombrowski happened to be in the neighborhood. I'm here. You are here. Sup? Hey. And uh, we decided to throw it out there, get online, see what happens. Uh, ask Joe anything. I'd like to talk to some of my fans. I'd like to talk about. Premier Championship Wrestling's big anniversary coming up Saturday, September yes. 14th. I'd like to talk about uh, DJ Z Gone Wild coming to DVD and digital on or about September 18th. We got a lot of stuff coming on, uh, coming up in the fire. September and, 18th. I'm early with these discs. Well, it's, now Now we can put the heat on Fantastic. Jesse. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah, you're ahead of schedule. We don't have a Jesse cover yet, and oh. uh, heat's on He's him. He's been on vacation. I'm going on vacation. See, well, you guys timed it well. If I would have lost both of you at the same time, I'd have been ships in the sea. So useless. Ships in the sea. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of pokers in the fire, a lot going on right now, and uh, I will be happy to address anything that any fan or fellow wrestler or aficionado may uh, uh, be concerned with. I can do uh, uh, advice uh, for the lovelorn. I can do uh, uh, financial advice. <laughs> Um, I can, if somebody's just sad, I can, I can talk them up and, and compliment them. I, I can do a lot of things. There's, there's been a lot of that happening. There's been a lot of like, Hey man, you're doing okay. You know, just kind of being put out there by people lately. And then I think a lot of people are doing good, well these days. A lot of good it's, vibes. It's, a lot of good vibes. Yeah. Good, good vibes. Like, uh, like Philly Marino experience, good vibes and good times. Philly Marino experience. I keep forgetting which one's Philly and which one's Marino. Don't mess that up on the internet. They get mad about that. The internet gets mad about everything. I think I told you about You were that probably thing. on wrestling Twitter. Well, how did you mess up Philly and Marino? Uh, no, I didn't. The commentators did. Oh. I just don't say. It's just like I can't tell you which Uso is which. And there was another tag team that popped up. Are you insinuating that Philly and Marino are twins? <laughs> yes. They both look the same to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure no, if that's appropriate that, or not. This is, I, I mean, in your, in your, now, of course, I'm sure you have methods to deal with this given your position as a as a commentator but um i mean that thing where tag team comes in you know them as the unit you know it's this guy and this guy but you don't take the moment to figure out oh that one's animal and that one's hawk well yeah i, I handle it by doing 10 seconds of research and looking up who's who all right all right all right go say hello to them i mean just, i don't know it, it just it just doesn't bake in it's it's what it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't hit me and stay with me for some reason yeah well i mean you're okay because you're not the commentator i know i don't have to talk about whoever the commentator is should at least say hello philly hello marino who the hell are you and then we move on (laughs) marino is the one with uh with uh, uh uh poofy hair and nice abs okay and uh uh Philly's the other one. Philly's yeah. Philly's the guy. that's not Marino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. Philly Philly is the guy that's gonna do a moon salt that doesn't look like he can do a moon salt, but he does a really right. cool moon salt. And they're both the guys that dance. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marino's the guy whose name you cannot pronounce without sounding drunk. Mm. Marino Tanaglia. Tanaglia. I love Marino Tanaglia. <laughs> it's my friend. Right. Um. Yeah, that was my first bit. Uh, so, <laughs> there, oh no, there was something else I wanted to bring up here while we were kind of waiting for people. And again, please, if you're, and I'll, I might even pop over to, because um, I know we're streaming on a couple other platforms on Twitch on uh, the Twitter right now as well. I'm really over on Twitch. You, are you doing stuff on Twitch? Well, I, Triple H, Triple Mania was on Twitch. Oh, you are. You are really over. I on told Twitch. you. You, of any of us here, you're probably the most viewed on Twitch. I'm Twitch Tastic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Man. 
you know, it, it, this is how it goes. Like Josie's like, hey, Sork's uh, messing with some uh, Twitch, you know, experimenting a little bit. I'm going to go to Triple Mania. Yeah. I had a nervous Twitch leading up to that show. I'm that sure. Okay. I'm sure. Um, but you've been posting a lot of old school lately. Yeah, a lot of old school. You're digging. You're digging through the closet, aren't you? I I am. I, I I've been. Uh, I I've had a couple spare uh, weekends off the road lately. I've been cleaning the office, cleaning the house. I've been going through uh, old pictures on my computer and 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 kind of refurbishing uh, the Facebook since I started that anew back in January, um, and just just being nostalgic. Um, and it, 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 it's it's always things that uh, I stumble upon by happenstance. Uh, um, and I was I was in Cincinnati yesterday. Um, I had a super top secret meeting with Brian Pillman Jr. and <laughs> um, don't tell anyone. And uh, I, I also I hear he has nice hair. He has a lot of hair. It's present. It exists. Um, he is going to single-handedly uh, 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 modernize and, and refurbish the mullet in American pop culture. Just give him the right platform. Um, but I also stopped by what is now the former house of Les Thatcher um, to pick up more tapes and gems and uh, memorabilia from him. Uh, and I will have some very old timey tech questions for you off air. By the way, oh, fantastic! If, um, you, if you come at me with a heat bill reader tape, I'm gonna... <laughs> what do I do with this reel to reel, kid? You're not you're not right, but you're not far off. <laughs> so, but I, I was looking through this box, and this is stuff. And and, and Les has lived in this house for decades and decades and decades. He finally sold the house and moved to Knoxville earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm looking through because um, it's not just wrestling tapes it's audio cassettes of and not even to do with wrestling but it, it just it's just a mess of whatever is in there like family photos and heirlooms and stuff like that it's literally it looks like it hadn't been gone through in at least 30 years wait was all that like in the bin you got yes yes i have pictures of less thatcher family members that i am unaware of who they are right now and wow. uh i plan to frame them and keep them forever and cherish them um but I, I found what is normally not not my normal cup of tea in uh, these uh, boxes. I found a holy Bible. Okay. And uh, normally I pick one up, my flesh starts burning, and I have to put it down. But uh, I mean, you get you do get a little singy because we are right by to, uh, uh, right right directly beside a Presbyterian church when you walk in. There you go. That's mm-hmm. why I felt off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I looked into the Bible because there were a few um, newspaper clippings and like memorabilia mm-hmm. inside. And I found, um, I don't know what you would call it, like a, like a prayer card, like those little uh, little cards that, that you take at a funeral. Right. right. Prayer card, is that correct? I believe so. Uh, I found the prayer card for the funeral of Jim Crockett Sr., who founded Jim Crockett Promotions, who is the father of Jim Crockett Jr., who uh, uh, you know took on Vince nationally in the 80s. Jim Crockett Sr.'s funeral, if, if memory serves, was in 1973. And the prayer card was still in there, and I found myself holding Jim Crockett Sr.'s uh, uh, funeral prayer card and listed as um, pallbearers were uh, men such as Eddie Graham, a uh, famous Florida promoter who helped teach Dusty and helped teach so many promoters and bookers after him, and uh, my buddy Jerry Briscoe. So a a very cool um, blast from the past uh, to 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 have that still existing to commemorate, you know, the life and existence of of one of the most influential promoters of his day for sure, Jim Crockett Senior. Um, so I I always dig the nostalgia, and I you know we, we, last time I was on here we talked about prowrestlinglibrary dot com and everything else I'm doing, and it's like it, wrestling moves so quickly that so much can get lost to time mm-hmm. if you don't preserve it and give it a home. Mm-hmm. You know you've been posting all these PWX matches from like 1997, 98, which was when I first discovered and learned what what pro wrestling is, and um, I still remember. Uh, um, 
I'm I'm looking at, at DJ Z literally on this TV right now. I remember the first time he stayed at my house and like I showed him tapes of of, of PWX from 1998. And he was like blown away that independent wrestling was around back then because he had no clue. And mm -hmm. all these guys that meant so much to him, like Shirley Doe and on down the line, he got to see like in their early years, you know. Um, but it, that has a place and mm -hmm. that has a home because there's generation after generation after generation in wrestling that came along after that that may not know that existed and can watch it and learn from it. And uh, uh, it's cool to keep that past going because if you don't learn from the past, you're not going to be ready for your future. That's you're going to make the same mistakes. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, you know, there's a lot of that stuff that's been surfacing that has been kind of uh, uh, left to the vault or in the DVDs or in with the precious uh, family heirlooms in somebody's house in Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. It's literally somebody's house now. Les does not live there. I had to coordinate with a guy. I have no idea who he is to so get into the garage. To that, and, and, and I mean, really, I think we can probably lend a, a little bit to WWE that like a lot of people, they're doing that too. They're dusting off a lot of these libraries. Um, recently, I got a chance to watch the uh, Adrian Street documentary okay somebody i was never aware of i know nothing of british wrestling history of british wrestling other than things that william regal has said <laughs> sure <laughs> you know um and fit finley you know that yeah. that's it and 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 references by mike tenay during any of their matches yeah uh like that's it that, that's your look into into british wrestling and then like there's this documentary about adrian street and what he did here in the territories uh and what he did over there you know kind of the first uh, or one of the early over the top, you know, uh, androgynous kind right. of characters in wrestling. And it works so well, you know, talking about his matches with Terry Taylor and, and you know, uh, to kind of give that a scope back when Terry Taylor was, you know, his age, when he was doing stuff and TV champion at these promotions. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like that is so eye opening. Like it's so, you know, kind of like Indies here or, or in, I'm not Indies here, but well, yeah, a little bit here. Indies today. Um, you know, there's just, you go back to those territories and everything. There's just so much that just hasn't been uncovered. Yeah. And, and there's so much that is lost time as far as just, um, ring work that kids can learn from as far as just little subtle things and matches. I posted, uh, a match clip between, uh, Terry Taylor, coincidentally, mm -hmm. and Jacques Rougeau from Memphis, Mid-South Coliseum. I've been going through... Uh, the entire 1983 year of, of Memphis television. And um, there was a counter to where, where Jacques tries to monkey flip Terry, and Terry just sits out and shakes his head and gets a big reaction. I had never seen that before. I've been watching wrestling for almost 30 years. I've never seen that before. Um, but even watching guys that are, are super well-known, like Macho Man Randy Savage, uh, if you truly watch his work in some of these earlier matches, or these longer house show matches, just the way he stalls or the way he sells or the way he moves, the way he emotes, just his body language, um, things that you could start doing today and it instantly stand out mm -hmm. and instantly get over. Anything Terry Funk does, Terry Funk is so different. Um, I, I remember I, it was a match. It was Ma uh, Macho Man and his brother Lanny Poffo against maybe the fabulous ones. I don't remember what it was, but but I, I, the babyface team is probably, is either fabulous ones or Rock and Roll Express. Remember Rock and Roll Express? Um, whatever the babyface team did, just some little taunt, just some little screw you type of thing, little ha-ha spot to get the crowd to cheer um, and get Lanny to like, you know, take a step back. The way Macho sold it, like he was just so disgruntled, he just leapt out of the ring. Just the way he did it, I can't do it justice. But it was a laugh out loud moment. Just be, it, it, it's taking those those subtle things. No one's locked up yet. No one's touched each other yet. But the people are roaring, and and, and you know it. it it's um, you, you've got them in the palm of your hand already. And and you know a lot of young kids, the kids these days, um think of like, oh, slow down or, oh, don't do so much. It's like, mm -hmm. be boring and grab a headlock for 25 minutes. But that's not what it is. It's, it's, 
it's make the moment matter. Mm -hmm. And so many guys could do that. There, there's not a Terry Funk match that I'm not just enthralled because you don't know what he's going to do because I guarantee Terry didn't know what he's going to do. Yeah. You know, Roddy Piper, Buzz Sawyer, Kevin Sullivan, just guys like that who they're not gimmicks, but they're so over the top, even if they're just in a pair of black trunks. I can't tell you anybody today thinking along with that. The last person that I was actually um, – um, afraid to talk to in wrestling because of their online persona that, tr that, you know, kind of transcended like a Roddy Piper, right? Like, you're just like, you're going to probably meet Roddy Piper. If you run into Roddy Piper, mm -hmm. right. You don't meet, um, uh, Mr. Tombs, you right. know? Um, and the last part I can think of was Scott Steiner. Cause they're like, Oh, go, go talk to him about this. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to go talk to Scott Steiner. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to ask him, fan questions because he'll pop my head off you know you know but but i can't think of anybody that's come up in the last 15 years that i would get that vibe from you know definitely not nationally Pro probably maybe some in, in in other countries or some on an independent level mm -hmm. um probably british guys yeah like 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 they come off like i feel like i feel like walter coming up i would have been intimidated with running into yeah. Right. Like w when I first came in, um, Loki was that bad. Oh yes. And and when you met him at the table, it was it was still Loki. Yeah, because he had that deep Loki yeah. James Earl Jones voice. Yes, and he would shake your hand, and he would have such a tight grip. Uh, there was a wonderful story from uh, Doc Remedy, uh, who may resemble David Ardemera. Um and he he. He went up and shook his hand and said, "Oh, that was that was a great match. You hit hard or something, right? It was like our second independent match we'd ever been to." And he says, "Yes, hit hard, you know, of course." And like he said nothing else. Mm -hmm. and it was just like, but it was the most intimidating thing between that and that handshake, right? Yeah. Versus like, you know, I met Ray Rowe and like he was like the nicest guy. I was like, I just watched you kill guys for like fifteen minutes, yeah. you know. And, so. and and anytime I talked to Loki, he was always a gentleman. Oh yeah, oh he's he, always he, right. he was very articulate and still is. I'm sure. I haven't I haven't seen him. Probably the last time I saw him was maybe WrestleMania weekend in Dallas. But um, always articulate, always a gentleman, mm -hmm. always dressed nicely, mm -hmm. um, very business first. Mm -hmm. um, so. And, I'm, I'm, and others have had different experiences with him, I'm sure, that have been in the ring with him or, or, or whatever. But um, the way he carries himself in ring and out was just always very legitimate mm -hmm. and very business first and very mm -hmm. genuine. And not saying everyone needs to walk around, you know, uh, acting like Loki, but everybody needs to take into account that presentation matters, that perception is reality, that if people look at you a certain way, um, it can gain you more respect or gain you more attention or more interest. You know, it goes back to the fact I'll pay to watch Loki, but I'm not going to pay to watch the guy on social media that'll bitch about his double shift at Arby's and then expect me to believe him as a legitimate wrestler this weekend. Right. It all comes down to context and how you present yourself because it's not just what you do in the ring. It is literally a 24 seven job. We got our first question from the chat room. I like to talk to my fans. I'm sure yes. it's a loving supporting fan. Jesse the Mark. Never heard of him. Okay. Um, well, he asked why. Did he hear when we buried him earlier? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He'll have to rewind for that one or wait for the to release on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> he just asked why are this. And then I yelled at him about ask a question. He said, I just did. Because this are as it be. Ooh. Unto the future and forevermore. Henceforth the end fantastic <laughs> jesse make my graphics <laughs> there you go you got a list <laughs> Jeez. some of the best graphics in the business like I, yo hands down hands down yes um that is that is one thing uh you know like, i will i will give jesse some credit because the stuff he turns in on on uh posters are like the cleanest yeah, there's 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 nobody I would rather go to or nobody I would want to go to for mm -hmm. the posters, the graphics, the flyers, uh, the DVD covers. Um, you know, it's it's and and he's been in the trenches so long 
He's not bitter at all. He well, I will. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I was say he understands what to do and what not to do. Mm-hmm. He understands how to be eye catching, not just from a wrestling context, but from a design context. And he's dealt with my nonsense for so long that uh, he has a feel of of what I do and don't do and why. So <laughs> that helps take our projects down from like you know, 17 drafts down to like five or six. He is commenting in responses. Oh fuck. You probably did bury me. Don't I owe you a poster? Put me over more. (laughs) Uh, Poster two matches, DVD cover, but uh, who's counting? DJ Z gone wild. 48 hours to Orlando available September 18th on Joe dash. Dombrowski.com and promotion library.com and (laughs) indie wrestling.us via vimeo and such etc etc all right <laughs> uh john john ashbaugh's in the chat he says he did meet the steiners in meadville scott was a dick rick was cool though i mean everybody's got their own experiences um uh, there are very few people you can encounter that at least one fan doesn't have a horror story about, you know, you catch yeah. him on a bad day, yeah. you catch him at the airport, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I can't speak to Scott's mood that day. I didn't speak to Scott at all that day because Meadville shows, as you know, are insane. Uh, I'm at a merch table, an announce table, a merch table, an announce table. Mm-hmm. And then I'm spending 45 minutes going through the maze that is the Meadville middle school hallway to mm-hmm. take down my merch and walk it back. Listen, to the none of us are happy on Meadville. <laughs> In the long run, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it, it, I love the shows. The day. Oh, the shows are great. I love the big fat protrusion in my pocket. Mm, yeah, I'm referring to money for you perverts. Um, Meadville is one of my favorite stops in the calendar year. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is, but it's worth yeah. it. I'll. It, it's. It's like I'm doing big time wrestling this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, Somebody was just talking about that. Um, the uh, the TechoCon. Yeah, uh, and how much fun they had that. Uh, somebody I was just here for a, a video game marathon last night. So and that's awesome. So. And, and and TechoCon was such a, 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 an X factor to me because I, I like I, I helped I helped them put that show together because they wanted a lot of like local talent and personalities and such. Mm-hmm. So uh, of course, my first thought is you know find me a beast man. <laughs> um, but like I didn't know what we were gonna get as far as wrestling fans versus just anime fans that wandered in. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had beast, man. We had ugly ducklings. We had uh, shockwave of the robot. We had like these over the top personalities. We had facade, you know, and we had Scott Steiner and Shane Douglas and, um, you know, Gangrel and road warrior animal. And we had the Philly Marino experience. Um, I'm assuming both. I couldn't tell them apart. Um, but yeah, we, we had all these different, we had this cornucopia of, of talent for, for whatever you're into. We got something for you, you know, and I, I didn't know if they would be wrestling fans or if we'd be trying to win them over. But as soon as I introduced the first match and I paused for a second and I heard a bunch of them go, one fall. Never been so happy to hear something so annoying. <laughs> and then, thank you, wrestling tropes. And then the first the first match starts, and then uh, during the near falls, people are yelling out too. And I I knew then, like, all right, we'll be fine. We got them. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope we can do that again. That was something where me and Steve, the promoter, were kind of fish out of water. That's something that's happening a lot. We, of course, David Lawless was on talking about how wrestling's coming to the Four Courts Festival at uh, Highmark um, Stadium. Right on the the soccer stadium, uh, Riverhound stock. Soccer. No one's booked me yet, but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm entertaining you might, messages and offers. Yeah, there you go. Um, we can jo- you can join me in West Virginia for Black Diamond then. Do I have to go with you? I mean, I'll, if you want to go, whatever. Uh, but it was but these this is happening. Like these are like the wrestling's popping up at these festivals more and more, right? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I remember watching. Um, I think it was like incredibly strange wrestling or something or lucha or something. There, were, there was luchadors and they they gave you tortillas to to throw at the wrestlers um, at Warp Tour in that in that same spot where uh, the stage used to be uh, down there on the South Shore. You know, it, it, like and I hadn't that, that technically is probably my first indie show. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> when I think about it in like 2002. So 
it's one of those things that that the thing about wrestling now is that there's so many different subgenres of it, mm-hmm. and there's so many different reasons that people watch, and it's just kind of splintering off into its own thing. Um, and I'm not going to get into the pro wrestling performance arc debate because it's all exactly the same thing. So please stop arguing and blowing up my Twitter feed. <laughs> but um, what 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 doesn't matter is what you call it in that grand scope of things to each mm-hmm. other. What does matter is how you market it and what your audience is. That's right, what matters. Right. And are you, are you trying to put are you trying to put like a New Japan strong style show in the middle of a rock concert? Right. That's probably not going to yeah, work. We, 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 you know, when we did TechoCon, we had a cognizant thought of what this type of crowd is going to be, and, and we, we want to cater the event to that. When I do Big Time Wrestling this weekend, um, you know, Arn Anderson's going to be there, and, and a lot of times the Rock and Roll Express have been there, and you want to cater to that North Carolina mm-hmm. Jim Crockett nostalgia crowd because Dorton Arena had, you know, every month back in the 80s and 70s, Dusty and Flair and Magnum and Johnny Weaver and all the big talents of the day, and you want to lean on that to, to get your guys over. Yeah. Um, if you're yeah. doing a, a rock concert hall like WrestleRex or something like that, it's going to be a little wilder. It's going to be a little more in your face. It's mm. going to be a little more adult-oriented. If you're going to do... Um, you know, a small town where it's kids and families. You got to market that a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's so much more opportunity to hit new niche audiences from your your death matches to your lucha to your comedy to whatever Mm -hmm. the case is. I always think back to that show we went to in Detroit that was that circus-themed show. Yes! And I, you, somebody had said to us or said to you or or you, you told me, they said, nobody here's a wrestling fan. Yeah. These are all, like, hipsters seeing something weird. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? Like, that's... That, that that is always stuck. We, in my we head. went with our friend uh, Pogo the One Legged Boy. Pogo the One Legged Boy. Yeah. yeah. Given name. AKA Zachary Gowan. Yes. Uh, he was doing great. I, he's been man. He's all over the place. When I think he's stuff. getting married tomorrow. What tomorrow? Something like that. Wow. I, just, I how I I read Gregory Irons' booking schedule and Zach Gowan's wedding was on it. So I'm just <laughs> assuming. I love I'm it. assuming Greg Iron's not lying about going to a it. wedding, was but that, maybe he is. Who was knows? that a board game with uh, Gargano, Candice, and uh, M Dog on there as well from last night? That might have just been a, a call on the fly. I oh, okay, know. okay. I don't know. Just I a... I have no idea what that board game is, but uh, good for them. Good for good for Johnny S. Friend, aka Gregory Iron. Johnny S. Friend. Yes. That's what he would when he did the the NXT thing for the Gargano. Oh, he yeah. was ID'd as, as uh, Johnny's friend, and he's he's running with it. <laughs> Has he got T shirts yet? Have, have you seen his mock PWI five hundred bio where he's ranked five hundred one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read that right up. It talks all about Johnny S. Friend. It does. It does. Yes. Um, it's his best year yet. But uh, Zach is doing amazing. I love Zach. I miss Zach. I'm proud of Zach. Uh, I, I've seen Zach at his best, and I've seen Zach at his worst. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he just got back from like two weeks on the road speaking to kids. He loves that. I know he's not wrestling as much lately, mm-hmm. which is probably, you know, his body's probably thanking him. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But he's truly found his calling, and he's found Good. his passion, and he's found he's found his happiness. And to me... Life is about two things more than anything else. It's about finding freedom, do what you want, and and just happiness um, with not just what you're doing, but with yourself as well. And Zach's found both of those things, so he has figured out life. Excellent. Jesse has a question. I feel philosophical right now. This is good. This is good. Well, let's turn that around. Is Jesse going to ruin it? Uh, Joe, tell an England story. (laughs) Ah, uh, I got to tell the England story, right? I got to talk about uh, the UK Pillow Massacre. As uh, I heard about this, yes, I you, have heard. About it. I don't know if you told this on the show. Yet. You edited part of it because Samoa Joe talks about it. And Samoa Joe, oh, does that's matches. right. Yes, yes. So that's one that that is one. So when I do these DVDs and like I'm putting the chapter points in, like I, I saw that one, and that was one of the few where I'm like, I'm gonna sit and listen to this. Yes. You were probably like, I wish I knew more about British wrestling now. Yeah. Um, so we were at a very fancy hotel, probably a four-star hotel in Doncaster, England. This is 1PW 2006. 
For those that are unaware, 1PW was a wrestling promotion that booked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of very talented, famous wrestlers. And for some reason, me. And It was AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, uh, Samoa Joe, and Joe Dombrowski. Yeah. Why has my name got to be last? Um, it was one of those things where uh, the promoter had run a like a video game store and like a wrestling merchandise store did well decided to take his money and just set it on fire and throw it in the toilet. Um, poorly managed. We were selling out most of the shows, but still filed for bankruptcy six or eight months later. Wow. Um, and we, and when I say we, I'm referring to anybody that's not the promoter, were never informed of financial books or statements or what did or didn't make money. So when the promoter comes to us and says, hey, let's book Christian. And we're like, okay. You know, we assume that he wouldn't actually ruin his life doing this, but oops. Um, so the UK Pillow, Ma- Pillow Massacre has pretty much 90% of TNA and Ring of Honor in the building at this point. Um, <laughs> Circa 2006. Yes. I may have been the first one ribbed. Steve Carino, who I love very much, mm-hmm. uh, one of my favorite broadcast colleagues, uh, Chris Hamrick. One of the best ribbers in the business. Um, recent participant in Rise Wrestling and Stomp Out Cancer. And Sterling James Keenan, who has faded to obscurity and I have no clue what he's doing now. No idea. Um, decided to rib everybody. One at a time. <laughs> We're all at the hotel bar relaxing after a... Uh, Show well done. And I get told I have a phone call in my hotel room. And I'm assuming, oh, it's the promoter calling me because there's some kind of an issue. So I'm like, okay, I need to take this. Um, So I'm walking across the lobby, going down the hall. And in the hall was Loki on one knee tying a shoe. And I didn't think any of it at the time. But... Lo and behold, that was the signal that I'm coming. Because when Loki stood up from tying a shoe, that was the cue for the vultures to pounce. Because Carino, Hamrick, and Sterling James, Corey Graves assault the hell out of me with pillows. Beating me about the head and shoulders and all over my body. Chris Hamrick hit me in the eye with a pillow. That bent my eyeglasses. I'm a trooper, folks. I'm a warrior. Um, How many years in the business were you at this point? Three years. Three years. Three years. Okay. I was um, 20 years old. You were 20 years old. 20 years in old. England, getting mauled by pillows by an yes. ECW original. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um. So I did what a responsible, professional member of the 1PW front office would do at that point. Mm -hmm. Sat back and watched them get everybody else. (laughs) Um, They tried to get... I think this happened before me. I I, I wasn't the first. They they tried to go to Al Snow's room before me, I think. Yes. Um, And Al Snow one up them by opening the door just enough to throw water on them. So Hamrick's pillow was also wet, <laughs> which gave it more weight, which meant it hurt more. Um, but I watched them get the refs. I watched them get blue meanie. I watched them get Jarrett. I watched them get everybody one by one by one by one by one. Um, th- there were only three people on the show's off limits. Charlie Haas, because Charlie could legitimately mess them up if he, if he wanted to, mm-hmm. um, being an amateur standout at Seton Hall. Homicide, because he could legitimately mess them up if he wanted to in a completely other way, probably. He was named Homicide. Yes. And Bret Hart, because it was Bret Hart, and he had all of his you know medical issues previously. And you and saw because... what happened to the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perhaps that was 
I, I don't know if the guy, the assault had a, a pillow involved with the Hall of Fame or not, but perhaps it was karma catching up to him. Mm. Nobody can avoid us. No. So uh, um, other people are getting involved. Like it was kind of a revolving door of, of pillow handed culprits throughout the night. Cause this went on for like two hours. Mm-hmm. Like they'd barge into people's rooms. They'd lure people <laughs> one by one from the bar. Like this was a, this was an extended sting so, operation. And I believe the, the story, not to spoil the, the moment on the DVD with Samoa Joe, is he was in the middle of a... Yes, I'm, I'm getting to that. Okay. Because one of the kids that joins in is a, a, a kid that was equally as young as me, but thankfully far, far, far less intelligent, <laughs> named Jay Phoenix. He was a Scottish kid, and he was one of those kids that was not very self-aware and really didn't know his place and really didn't know how he came off to people. Like, I remember him being on our bus. Like, he didn't fly in. Why is he on our bus? Why didn't he, you know, hop a friggin' cab or something? Um, but he was trying to be one of the boys, and he was one of the, the pillow assailants at some point. Mm-hmm. So it's late in the night. Bar's getting ready to close down. There's only three people left in it. Smo Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. And they are playing uh, a high money game of Texas Hold'em. And Karino and Hamrick, the evil gears in their head, start moving. And uh, one of the guys is like, Well, I'll get AJ. And one guy's like, Well, I'll get Daniels. And Karino's like, Well, I'm not getting Joe. So then this kid, Jay Phoenix. <laughs> says the three words that will immortalize him forever in wrestling lore. He says, well, I'll get Joe. Creon Hamrick's eyes light up. All right, as you get Joe, I'll get AJ, and you get Christopher Daniels. We'll get everybody at once with a big ambush. All right, we'll go on three. Ready? One, two, three. And only one person went on three. <laughs> and Creon Hamrick hang back. You hear thump, thump, thump. Oh, shit. Kid runs back. Samoa Joe, meanwhile, has no idea what just happened. He has no idea who this kid is. And he genuinely thinks someone is trying to rob the game. Obviously, very poorly. First instinct. Yeah. Also, first instinct, first moment. So, Joe gets up. He's mad. And he's walking so fast, there's practically a trail of steam behind him. And Joe gets to the hallway where we all are, and he's looking for who it was. Who was it? Who was it? Finds the kid, pushes him up by the throat against the wall, and keeps repeating, do you know me? Do you know me? (laughs) Over and over again. I'm sure the kid is defecating himself at this Mm -hmm. point. The kid is stunned in fear. Joe grabs him, drags him outside. Joe is stretching this young Scottish gentleman in the parking lot, asking him, who put you up to this? Creon Hamrick, sir. Creon Hamrick, sir. Are Creon Hamrick going to save your life right now? Creon Hamrick, look at each other. No. Someone who was not me, I was far away from the awkward parts, um, convinced Joe to not do anything further because if they called the police in a foreign country, that would be very bad. Uh, So Joe calms down for a little bit um, and cooler heads prevail. Joe winds up, uh, we're all back in the the, uh, hotel. Joe decides to go to his room, call tonight. Joe has to walk by all of us one last time. He stops at the kid. Looks him square in the eye. Time stands still. Joe says, just give me one reason. (laughs) And you know the cooler head that prevailed there? Low key. Low key stepped in. (laughs) And told Joe to go to his room. And Joe did. And that was the last we saw of him that night. And 
obviously, as you saw by the the uh, the video and the the show DVD we did, it, it turned into a running joke after yeah. that. It wasn't a source of tension, but I mean, that and many many other way 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 worse things that kid did uh, was self sabotage to say the least. <laughs> and uh, but that's that's always going to be the story from from England and one PW, the UK pillow massacre. AKA the time I almost watch Samoa Joe murder a Scotsman. Wow. That could be a documentary right there. Uh, we have more questions in the chat room. The uh, West Coast contingent has been showing up in the chat room. Our, West Coast uh, is the best coast. West, there you West go. Side! Uh, That's the coolest thing I'll ever do. Alex Miller out in LA. Greater LA. I don't know LA. LA. I mean, LA is like half a state, I think, right? It's Los huge. Angeles is it's very huge. large. Yes, it's huge, huge, huge. Uh, would you like to see Nick Gage versus C- Sin Vas- Vasquez? Vasquez. I don't know if he spelled Are it. Are you right. trying to say Kane Velasquez? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, would I like to see it? I'm not familiar with the second. I th- I think that would be a a. a, a Okay, well, and, and let me resend my comment earlier. Nick Gage in person? No, I don't want to meet that guy in person. Mm, Nick F and Gage scares me. He he's he looked at me like three rows back coming to the ring, and I was like, nope. I I I would love to. I almost love to see them in MMA more than pro wrestling. Um, Cain Velasquez is a UFC badass. He's the guy that oh. he's the guy that beat Brock Lesnar. Oh. Um, and he made his pro wrestling debut at Triple Mania. Okay. In a six man tag with uh, uh, Cody, Psycho Clown, uh, Tejano, Torres, uh, Killer Cross. Very talented. Wow. Uh, uh, a trios match. And Kane Velasquez, his first ever match. He's doing Ranas. He's doing Lucha. Like, Kane didn't want to come in and do like novelty celebrity wrestling. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to be Mr. T or Drew Carey or like. Or he'd be just, just Carl the Malone. MMA, just the MMA guy in a ring. Yeah, he he didn't want to do that. He wanted to be a luchador. Mm-hmm. Like he grew up watching lucha libre and 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 having a deep respect for it. Wow. And he wants to do this again. He wants to do this regularly. Yeah. Um. And and the eyes of the world, like ESPN, covered that match. Like wow. that that was a big deal, especially down there. Um. I think Kane has a very long and prosperous future in wrestling if he wants it, and I think he does want it. Um, I'm intrigued by him and Nick Gage hooking it up, but I'm even more intrigued of them doing it in an MMA fight than in a pro wrestling match, to be honest with you. But that would be a hell of a gut check. Well, questions are rolling in right now. Uh, let's stay for the moment on Triple uh, Mania. Uh, Tina in Seattle uh, says, great commentating on the uh, Triple A Triple Mania. Thank you. And uh, also, did you get Blue Demon's blood on you? I did not because I was up near the top of the stage, Mm -hmm. but um, if I had been at ringside like Stryker and Vampor last year, I would probably have a a healthy amount of plasma on me because that was the probably the bloodiest visual I'd ever seen in person. Wow. Wow. Um, you, the old adage of like dripping like a faucet, running like a sieve, like that was Blue Demon Jr.'s uh, skull throughout that much of that match. Um, gross sight, but uh, hell of a match. Blue Demon Jr., Dr. Wagner Jr., um, Lucha de Apuesta, mask versus hair. Lucha de Apuesta is fight with a wager. Mm. Sorg doesn't speak Espanol. No, I do not. No, I do not. Only enough to order my taco across the street. Uh, somebody named Bic Steele um, says, Joe. Who's that? I don't know. Big fan. What's your biggest pet peeve as a commentator and biggest pet peeve as a matchmaker? Sorry if it's been asked. Just hopped in. Uh, first of all, he's not sorry about anything. That's uh, mm. that's a lie. Um, pet peeve about commentary would be announcers that think it's about them yes and want to pop the boys or want to get themselves over instead of uh what they're supposed to do and to a lesser extent announcers that that just call moves instead of tell stories Mm -hmm. if i'm watching the match and you say oh it's nice side headlock and there's nice hammer lock and there's nice drop toe and there's nice it's it's just empty words. Why is it nice? Enthusiasm, enthusiasm for what's like, happening. When right? I hear an announcer say, 
oh, that's a nice punch to the face. Really? What made it nice? Could you explain that? Could you break that down? Just, just things like that. It, it, it's There's a difference between playing pretend wrestler and being a wrestler. There's a difference between playing pretend announcer and being an announcer. Mm-hmm. Um, my pet peeve as a matchmaker... Um, my pet peeve with other matchmakers are people that don't bring story and context and just throw things at the wall. Mm-hmm. My pet peeve doing matchmaking myself would be just dealing with the um, unavoidable pitfalls. Um, this guy's double booked. This guy's car broke down. Um, now we have to do something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fix this. Yeah. Which – on one respect, is a fun, not a fun, but is is a challenge that that I can enjoy and embrace. That and that's the kind of thing you know we we've talked with others like those sometimes create interesting opportunities. It does because oftentimes it's next man up. Mm-hmm. There have been guys who I've had a cancellation and it turns into who's here, and um, whoever's there or whoever's a phone call away mm-hmm. winds up getting that opportunity. Um, that's the that's how Jack Pollock started in Premiere. That's how R.C. Dupree started in Premiere. Um, and that's not to say they wouldn't have gotten there anyway, because mm-hmm. they would have. But that that's what jump started it. Um, but yeah, it, it's a labor of love, and I wish people understood how difficult a job matchmaking or booking a show really is, because. It's not just, well, I want to see this match, and I want to see this guy, and this will be cool, so let's do it. It's getting the most out of everything you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's being logical. It's it's something that's easy to digest, and it's it's um, it's looking at, at, at an overall picture rather than one puzzle piece. You as a wrestler, you're looking at your puzzle piece and what's best for that and how what's going to make that look good. Mm-hmm. But I have to make sure whole picture looks good so if you want your puzzle piece over here where the main event puzzle pieces are but it looks like crap it's going to ruin the whole picture then uh then uh, your piece may not be ready for that i'm going to stay on the commentary thread because we have a lot of comments and questions off of that um and i want to try to uh, roll back through and get some of your other questions here as as appropriate uh for you guys out there um so so first uh rob cameraman rob we're aware of him i enjoy the rob (laughs) Um, I hate when someone's heel commentary character just for the sake of it, not because they're established that way as a character or personality. There is somebody that I've had to work with that I won't name, and he's not from this area, so no conspiracy theorists. But anytime I've had to work with him, Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be bad because he doesn't have a personality. He just regurgitates Bobby Heenan lines. Mm. He just, uh, it, it's like, this of... guy's the heel, this guy's the villain, the, the antagonist, so I should take his side, even though there's no reason to. I'm just going to root for him for no reason. There should be some logic in that heel yes. commentator side. Yes, and, and if you're a, if you're an antagonistic announcer, it's your job to tell me their side of the story. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you things at face value. I'm going to give you my perception of things as as an even keel layman, or if if the villain is is diabolical enough, maybe I'll even do a little rah rah. But I try not to, mm-hmm. um, unless I'm around BC because it's just great to argue with him. Um, sorry, Big Steel. Um, but if you're the villainous commentator, villain has a point of view. No. Villain believes they're the villain. F- very few. Right. Regal. Right. Piper probably. But like they are doing what in their mind is the right thing to do. They only they, – they either just have a faulty sense of logic behind it or they take things too far. Um, so they have a point of view and you need to tell me what that point of view is so I understand what their motivation is as flawed as it may be. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, off of that same vein from Jesse the Mark, uh, people who think they can do commentary because they like to talk about wrestling. Talking about wrestling is go start a podcast. Yes. <laughs> Talking. And even then, please do not start a podcast. We have enough. The, the, 
Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we have enough, and they are all hosted by Michael Sorg. I don't well, know how. I mean, I only I only host like three of them, and and I, I'm trying to get other people to do ones. So, but yeah, th- there's a difference between talking about wrestling and being a part of uh, the overall story because we all need each other to make this wrestling product work. Uh-oh. And if you're going to again not understand why you're there and just talk for the sake of talking. Okay, cool. You're there. You're filling empty space, but are you doing anything to help anybody? Other yeah, than there's, yourself? I, and, it, and and that's a little like, um, we've had the conversation plenty of times about kind of the uh, last thing you think about is your production team, this, that, and the other, everything from referees to commentators to announcers. Like any of those can break the show, mm-hmm. right? For for the audience, wherever you're you're trying to put it. Um, it amazes me just to interject and please don't lose your thought. It amazes me that I've seen independent promotions literally spend thousands of dollars on their talent roster. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, do not pay their announcers. Wow. A, that's disrespectful for the announcers because it shows you, it shows them that, that you perceive their value to be worthless. Mm -hmm. B, it shows you have no respect for the job because you're not going to invest to make that good because you could have $10,000 of talent in the ring, but if some schlub is calling it, he's, he's going to kill the segment and you're not going to be able to sell. How many shows have you been on where you have all that money and the talent and the audio capturing you doesn't work? That's happened a number of times. I've yeah. had to do redos, or I've, I've been I've muffly, had, I've or had I've been to fix too some hot. Of those you've been on. Yeah, absolutely. So it's um, <clears throat> you got to make sure everything works on all levels. Mm-hmm. And and the other bad thing about announcers that work for free is it hurts my market value mm-hmm. because how can I demand what well, I can get this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. W- yeah. When you can do it for free, and yeah. that hurts the business as a whole. If there's a ref that'll do it for free, who's going to go out and pay? Um, Brian Gorey or Chris Levin or Jake Clemens or mm-hmm. any of these guys who are trying to make a run or have made a successful run and do this. Yeah, all those names I, I, you know, I recognize from Ring of Honor and Evolve. Yeah. 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 And th- th- those are guys that are taking this seriously. I'm a guy that's taking this seriously. But if you want to go play, you know, fun house weekend warrior, you know, tell your friends at the bar, I'm, I'm a wrestling ref. I'm a wrestling announcer just to get your jollies off. And you're taking a spot that somebody that could actually do with it can, mm-hmm. uh, something that actually do something with it can do. Um, you're not helping. And if you, if you really, in some people, if they really enjoyed the business and really respected the business, they'd recognize they should be back on the other side of the guardrail. Mm-hmm. Uh, burn who am i shooting on (laughs) where do you start it's a big industry of the good and the bad alphabetical list in my pocket an alphabetical list uh and it's going it's going at this in the in the chat room that also kind of goes for managers you know that's kind of the the i don't know how many promotions i go to where i'm just like uh, a friend that's the manager right Mm -hmm. and fifth ring post fifth ring post yep interesting or like I, I, I've seen examples where it's like I want to manage that guy, so then he asked to manage that guy, and now he's managing that guy, mm-hmm. and if it, and him managing that guy consists of clappy clap and standing there, like yeah, baby face managers. What's yeah. baby? What's a baby face manager? It's a dead spot unless you're Paul Bearer, because what do you do? What do you do? I saw a manager come out with a cane one time, only one time, and he well. He, it's the only time where the guy needed the cane. Okay. And tried to navigate. Is it VC the... Steel? Did he fall down the steps? Not this time. Okay. No, no, no. This is a different time. Okay. Um, and he he had to navigate the steps to okay. get insisted to get in the ring to cut this promo introducing his guy, which was not great, which took forever because he had to navigate the steps and right. could not navigate the steps. It was really awkward and yeah. i don't know what the point was you know it's it's i'm sure that guy paid for somebody's flight i don't know mm, i mean maybe I, but, and 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 generally that's what it is it's promoter's friend it's mm. promoter's helper it's well you can't work a match but you, you want to be on the show and again there's an art to it mm. and if if you as a promoter think oh anybody can do it that's a slap in our face because people like BC Steel um, and people like myself uh, have put so many years into making a commodity out of ourselves and, and just trying to turn this into something, you know, whether it's whether it's a full time living or whether it's buying dinner or whether it's anywhere in between. 
Um, a lot of elbow grease went into making that what it is. And people that get in and don't take it seriously are just uh, um, an albatross. It's just going to weigh everything down and make it harder for the rest of us to rise above. We have a, a she asked it again. I swear is the next one I was going to ask. You're getting a lot of uh, hearts and thumbs up with uh, the, those latest comments, by the way. Uh, Tina in Seattle, any comment, commentator could be alive or dead. Would you like to call a match with? Now you've called you called with you mentioned Carino Vampiro. You had a lot of fun at the Lucha Expo Expo, Expo Lucha. Yes, when we get the name right. Um, but it's okay. It's not like you did all four of my discs. There's a lot of DVDs. <laughs> yes, a lot of wrestling for a very affordable Oof, price at yes. joe-nabrowski.com and yes. and uh, whatever my other thing is <laughs> wrestlinglibrary.com. Um, no, I, I, I've I've been fortunate enough to work with guys like Cornette and Mark Madden. Um, that that I, I grew up watching um, and get advice from 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 guys like uh, you know Jr. and Paul Heyman and guys like that. Um, number one with a bullet on the list is Bobby Heenan. Mm-hmm. I, I I met Bobby, I, dude. I was I, I wasn't there when you I wasn't there when you met Bobby, but you had gone off, talked to him, and came back. Yes, and that is the guys. This was the happiest, glowingest Joe Dombrowski that I had ever seen in the ten years I've known him. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, was. It was just like I, I could tell you just hit your life goal right. There. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a couple minutes with Bobby, and you know the the cancer had, had done a lot of damage to him, and uh-huh. he was tired because it was a long day. Um, so communicating wasn't the best, but he was still Bobby. He was still doing shtick. He was still doing back and forth material, and I got a chance to. It wasn't on camera. It wasn't a gig, but I had a chance to do a little back and forth with Bobby Heenan, and that mm-hmm. was uh, that was a life highlight. So it would it would be Bobby uh, if I could pick anybody out of anybody that's still possible. Um, probably Paul Heyman. Hmm. Um, a lot of people would be surprised. I wouldn't say a Jr. But keep in mind, uh, Jr. and I do essentially the same job. So it would be a little bit harder to have the same chemistry I could be mm-hmm. if I was playing off of a character as strong as Paul. I would love to have Jr. in back on Gorilla producing me or critiquing me, absolutely. But uh, get me out there with somebody that I can I can do point counterpoint with, and I think Paulie would be the guy to do that. Um, some additional uh, commentary here. Um, Rob saying the happiest. I don't know. I've seen him uh, when everyone's shown up to work a show that they were supposed to. <laughs> Just not on time. I just, he's just not on time. <laughs> That's just an impossibility. Yeah. Uh, Will everyone show up at Premier Championship Wrestling Anniversary September 14th in Cleveland, Ohio? You should show up and find out. Tickets at joe-nabrowski.com. Card subject to change, and it could be surprising. Hell, last show, I didn't show up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you didn't show up. Rob didn't show up. I don't know how the show got off. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyways, uh, Chris LaRusso asks, what is the most scared you've ever been at a show? I was a little scared driving to that circus show in Detroit. Most scared I've been at a show. I was kind of scared at Triple Mania when there was a discussion in the announcer's room about, hey, if Dr. Wagner loses this match, do you think the crowd will riot and throw things? (laughs) That was a genuine, at least you weren't down by the ring. <laughs> that was until we realized we had a separate announcer perch. That was a fear. Oh, jeez. Um, the most afraid I've been at a show. I don't think I've ever really been afraid for my life or my safety or anything like that. I mm-hmm. think like the 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 most the, the most powerful like negative emotion I can think of that I felt would just be um, feeling for those that got injured especially those that got injured under my watch yes which has happened twice under my watch uh gregory iron and uh you were there for greg right? i was there i was ringside camera for that one gregory iron got uh his head dinged in a power bomb mm-hmm. and he had a history of, of near fatal concussion so that was a, a bad scare. his his body stiffened up he started I snoring think, upon yeah, impact yeah he did they, 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 uh, i got scared when they, like they pulled the gun out, the gum out of his mouth and everything yeah um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thankfully we had a nurse there and um a kid named Alex Jordan um mm. got hurt in premiere uh doing a dive and um 
didn't get the the launch that he needed, and he hit his head and his tailbone, I think, the hardest on the way down. But mm-hmm. he we stopped the show for about 20, 30 minutes and had to stretcher him out too. And mm-hmm. uh, those are both two individuals that I've really enjoyed working with and trying to help and, and cultivate. And um, it was a big burden on my um, – not just on my conscience, but on my heart to see them go through that. And I, I, I was scared for their safety and well-being. And thankfully, they are, um, you know, they were both up and kicking uh, uh, in pretty short order. Greg, I think, I think they both left the hospital that same night of those respective injuries, which is is a very fortuitous blessing. Excellent. Um I was into that and didn't set up the next question. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple other floating around here. Um, let's see. BC, uh, you didn't show up for premiere, but we were in the booth to do commentary. I'm so confused. Um, geez. Uh, BC is often confused. That is not news true, at all. True. I, um, love, I love Rob's like, Rob's like, I got a better gig. And Joe was all like, hold my beer. <laughs> Because I think Rob was working at uh, uh, Northeast Wrestling, one of the ball field shows. Rob right? Rob asked to uh, have the day off because he got an offer for NEW, mm-hmm. which I would consider a lateral move, not a better offer. Oh. Um, but uh, I had Mike Z on file, uh, uh, and having Mike Z as a cameraman was a lateral move and not better. I'll be professional. <laughs> um. And I knew Mike Z was more than capable, and um, Mike Z's great as a producer and a cameraman, stuff like that. He was a huge mm-hmm. help uh, when I wasn't uh, uh, physically there, except for the soundproof booth hidden away that I was doing commentary with BC Steel, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that 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 did happen, and uh, Rob is, is, is a great editor, and... Um, I'm I'm being really professional to make him feel guilty. We're good. Um, Don't read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, who knows what show? I'll just bail on next time. We'll see. Joe, I may leave right now. Well, uh, well, it's about an hour, so. <laughs> Gee, see, I didn't think I was popular. I think I, I figured like Ben would come in the chat and mess with me, and then nobody else would care. But oh, well, apparently Rob got off work, or he's waiting to get off shift. It's that uh, that 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 uh, that deep uh, Sorgatron fan base that I'm right. I'm leeching off of right now. That's right, you are. You got our West Coasters. They're 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 having their uh, post dinner um, check in with the see if we're Facebooking tonight. So, <laughs> Joe, where can people find what's going on with you? Thank you so much, by the way. Was that the end? Are we done? I think we're gonna wrap up. We're gonna wrap up on bearing Rob. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where we're going. That's fair. I'm really, uh, good at, Joe, I'm really good at bearing people. Joe, what did you learn from this experience? I just asked you three questions I know. Let's just start with this. What did you learn from this this experience in the last hour? What did I learn? Um, your fans and my friends uh, behave themselves a lot better than I thought they would. Okay. Good. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me uh, uh, nestled in this amazingly comfortable couch as often as possible. Um, joe-dombrowski.com is my website I am on Facebook I am on Twitter I am on Instagram I am on the Instube on your W dots you can find me at uh, Premier Championship Wrestling Cleveland, Ohio Saturday, September 14th for the anniversary which in my opinion on paper most stacked lineup Premier's ever done we have a four-way main event for the championship as Chris LaRusso um, that scared me when Chris LaRusso won my title. I was very frightened with that mm. uh, because he's a manipulative, powerful son of a bitch. I get that. And he will be defending that. the championship against Gory, Ron Mathis, and Atticus Coger, four men who've, who've hated each other as part of the turf war, and now it seems that LaRusso and Mathis have friction. Mathis seems to be under the impression LaRusso is going to lay down and give him the belt. Gory and Atticus have been fighting all over the area. At one point, they were closer than brothers. Now they are not on speaking terms. How will that dynamic play into this matchup? Uh, we're going to have a a, a a showcase, spotlight, uh, uh, kind of an indie dream match where Ace Perry will go one-on-one with Facade. You got Malcolm Monroe the third. Yes. He, I saw and the rest of his family get inducted to a, a Wrestling Hall of Fame in Detroit when I happened to be up there. 
Malcolm's grandfather is one of the most respected and revered Mm -hmm. wrestlers in that entire area. Uh, Malcolm Monroe Sr. at one point, I believe, I'm hoping my years aren't off, at one point he challenged Harley Race for the NWA world title. Wow. Um, And Malcolm's dad is still a very successful wrestler and promoter up there. Uh, Wardlow will be in action, Mr. AEW himself. Mm-hmm. Taking on Andrew Palace. Will will it be in slow motion? Will it be in slow motion? Yes. You saw the? Uh, did you see? I, the, no, I did. See, I did see the video. After I, think, I saw the video, I, I messaged Joe, uh, your, your Joe, John McChesney, and said, "Listen, do I have to film him in slow motion at Revenge?" Listen, now? if Wardlow decides to fight someone in slow motion, are you going to tell him to stop? I, won't. I mean, I'm not going to stop. Tell him to stop anything. No, because he's Wardlow, but. Yeah, and he he may completely destroy somebody, and it may be Andrew Palace. Also, we're going to have Dylan Bostic and Cisco Silver unsanctioned match. Dylan said some very unkind things about Cisco's family. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have the Ashton Day uh, 50th anniversary concert. I, have you seen this Ashton Day character? I've heard. No, we've seen some of this. Yes, Ashton Day wrote a song <laughs> called Calvin Couture pinned Andrew Palace. Yes. Um, I, you can guess what it's about. Hmm. Calvin has been just bragging incessantly about this, had this song commissioned, and now we get released today. Ashton Day has made this ridiculous documentary where he claimed that on the 50th anniversary of Woodstock last month, he's reminiscing about him headlining Woodstock and Jimi Hendrix stole the national anthem guitar playing from him. And, um, you can find it on, on the premier championship wrestling Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook, search Premier Championship Press on Twitter, search Premier CLE. Ashen Day has a documentary about his time at Woodstock, and it's absurd. Um, he's we, are, we have to celebrate now 50 years of Ashen Day. I looked it up. The kid's like 21. That math doesn't work. We're celebrating 50 years of Ashen Day. He's going to perform in concert at Premier. Um, I've, to- I've told him, though, Mr. Sorg, I've told him, if you're going to take time in my events... To play these songs and waste our time, you're going to pay me back for that time by being an in-ring competitor. So he better just beware of what he gets himself I'm surprised into. You, I'm surprised you didn't try to contractually obligate him to play Girls in Cars. If I had the rights, I would. Mm, that's true. You know who uh, uh, Ashton Day wrestled last month for you longtime Pittsburgh fans? Lennox Norris, former IWC competitor, I'll be damned. What? I'll be damn. His first name was Al. His last name was Dam. His middle initials B. I'll huh. be damn. Wow. My first, my first show ever in wrestling, January 2003. I'll be damn. Carlton Kaz made their IWC debut in the very first match at my high school. And the referee was a young whippersnapper named Bruce Gray. Bruce Gray. Yup. Wow. Colorblind ref. He's colorblind. No way. Who needs to see color when you can count to three? No. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. At least he can see. I will also be at uh, IWC High Stakes 3, Wheeling, West Virginia, on September 13th. I'll be in South Carolina for Big Time Wrestling September uh, 20th and 21st. Uh, Spartanburg will be one of those stops, the Historic Memorial Auditorium. Um, we are releasing the DJZ Gun Wild 48 hours till Orlando release, tentatively September 18th. And uh, I also have in the works, as a result of my business trip to Cincinnati, and so you'll be a part of this. Uh-oh. I am this releasing. Is, this is where I find out about this. Yes. Stuff. No, what, what project am I working on next? Listen, it's, it's probably not coming till WrestleMania. Okay. But we're going to start on it soon. Okay. I am going to release the most historically significant release I've ever put out. And I, I've done a lot of cool things. I'm Mr. Montreal Conspiracy Guy. I'm the Virgil Guy. I'm, I'm the guy that used to yell over the Gargano matches. I've done a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but the historical significance of what I'm working on um, has not been matched by anything else I've done. And it's something that's 20 years in the making. Is, was this one of those things you told me about last time you were here? Maybe I have a bad memory. Yeah, me too. I probably wouldn't remember anyways. So, JoeDashDombrowski.com, uh, ProWrestlingLibrary.com, 260 hours for five ninety nine a month. I just added the 
PWO Christmas holiday special where Hobo Joe brings a sack full of gifts for me and he puts awkward hats on my head. Speaking of Hobo Joe and his he friends. got a he got a yellow hard hat from some guy named Bulldozer. What happened to him? Who knows? But it's all on the show. <laughs> Bulldozer. I didn't know he was up there too. He wasn't, but his hat was. His hat was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so related to friends of Hobo Joe, uh, for the last twenty minutes, Jesse's been asking, uh, "You can't, you can't wrap the show yet." That's not a question uh, because he wants he wants a Virgil story. A Virgil story. A Virgil story. I did a whole DVD of Virgil story. I know. Is, is there any left? No, we've done them all. Um. I mean, the most recent Virgil story was WrestleRex. Yes, I was there for that one. Yes. Virgil. Live on a pay-per-view. And and boy, did it feel live when Virgil was out there. Virgil was supposed to come in the ring and welcome the fans to the event. Did I end up posting this? You insisted I post this. Yes, because it was was history, and I'll remind you why in this story. Mm. There were a bunch of... I'm going to try to pull it up. Uh, adult entertainment exotic dancers in the ring yes promoting an after party at a gentleman's club we're not going to say the name of it because because they didn't we pay, don't remember because they didn't pay us and i think they've changed their name <laughs> which are two very valid reasons yes not to be confused with the gentleman's club managed by gentleman joe perry in pwx in 1998 which you can find sorg posting ad nauseum in all these pwx classic clips i haven't posted one for a little bit but again well, i'm sure we're talking well about. then you screwed that plug up didn't you mm. um Virgil was supposed to come in the ring and um, welcome the fans Mm -hmm. and put over the strip club Mm -hmm. and say, you know what? I got the million dollar man's money to play with. I can start this party whenever I want. I'm going to take these ladies and go. I'll see y'all there after the show. Virgil instead goes into the ring, starts rambling and talking to and laughing at himself, mumbling to the point where the fans start chanting, this is awkward. Um, one of the girls starts twerking upon the insistence of Virgil. And Virgil, for some reason, decides to hold the microphone up to her buttocks every time she does this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he was looking for a comment or he was checking for gas, but either way. Um, Virgil is taking up so much time and sucking the life out of this room so badly (laughs) that one of the show organizers gets on the house mic and hits Virgil's line for him. Virgil, you got all the money you want. You can go start this party right now. We are frantically sending people to ringside to usher Virgil out of the ring. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there are people in the ring that are more attractive than Virgil, and they're doing sexy time things, uh, fans are throwing money in the ring. And I thought we would spend the next 25 minutes watching Virgil on his knees, picking up every dollar and groveling. But the reason, Mr. Sorg, we made history is Virgil left the ring and he didn't take the money. Virgil left money behind for the first, the last, the only time ever, then, now, forever. Virgil will be remembered for this moment and almost making wrestle Rex awkward and uncomfortable beyond repair before it even officially started. And that is why all of you promoters out there that say, Oh, it'd be so fun to have Virgil in the ring. Yes. But then when you expect Virgil to actually do the, do things and leave the ring, Virgil will not do those things. He may do different things that only make sense in his head. But like, if you just like a picture of Virgil in the corner of the screen, that's okay. That's about the extent of Virgil's talent at this point. But it's the whole walking and talking and thinking type of thing that really gets you lost. So, Virgil at WrestleRex. Yeah. Come to Southside in October. <laughs> you can check that Virgil out. won't be there. That clip's over on the IndieWrestling.us YouTube. And, of course, WrestleRex is over there on IndieWrestling.us as well. Um, so we're getting comments because again, Rob was once again ringside for that one on the camera. Uh, he said that uh, I think Rob just like comes with all of the wrestling ring rentals at this, this point. point. He's part of the contract. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, 
dude, I'm sending him some interesting places this month. Uh, filming it, filming it, it felt like time stood still and then went in reverse. I'm, <laughs> he says, also, I may have been the this is awkward guy. I think I think I do remember him starting. I was like, dude, you're chanting. You're on the headset. You're on the camera. Please don't do that. <laughs> so he just he just got there before everybody else did. Uh, be nice to Virgil. He's like a ten time Hall of Famer. Uh, and hashtag was seventeen WrestleMania. Seventeen rest stole my line before I got there. Yes, right. uh, seventeen WrestleManias, uh, fourteen and a half inches. Oh jeez, he says I <laughs> he says I force got my way through indie wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, let's try to end the show again. It's not my fault this time. Ah, eh, whatever. I'm still at joe and I'm still going to be all those other places. You are. Uh, and to round out my September, Pro Wrestling Conquest in Charleston, you'll be there. I will Friday, be there. Friday, September 27th. And we haven't told people we were going to be there yet. Yeah, well, I work there. On you, Okay. You work there now. Well, so. I guess I do. Well, I mean, at least for one show. Jock Sampson versus Al Snow. Holy shit. I haven't seen the card. Yeah. I just, I just know where we're going. I'm excited to see uh, Jackson Argos get beat up by Trey Lamar. I'm Ooh. a big fan of Trey Lamar. Yeah, I've seen some good Trey Lamar in, uh, um, in uh, Rise. Yeah. Did you know Trey Lamar's half Italian? Really? Yes. I saw him as part of an Italian tag team where his name was Trey Lamario. Huh. And you're looking at me like, is he making a dumb, bad joke? And yes, but it's also true. That actually <laughs> happened at a wrestling event in Indiana. Weird things happened in Indiana, Mr. Sork. Yeah. But I saw Trey Lamario. I saw a chess flex or wrestle mario mario you could have just ended the sentence That's... that i saw chess flexor and that would have been weird enough yeah yeah you and your pasta death matches no, no, not me I, it's you're the one bringing them to the masses i am i don't I see am. any pasta death matches in the 1998 pwx footage with gentleman <laughs> joe perry no all i see is the honeymoon ambush and the doctor on commentary now the doctor's a guy who's a terrible announcer but boy is he fun to listen to Fantastic. Joe, thank you for joining us. Thank you for putting up with me. Hanging out with us on a Thursday night. joe com. I, I thought this was dropping Tuesday. You're, you're it's pull, dropping pulling Tuesday. back the curtain. What, Tuesday, Thursday night? You never know. I mean, it, it's also replacing the Indie Mayhem Show and is replacing the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This I'm, is, this so I'm, is, I'm filling the program. You're filling the program for the entire week that I'm not here. That is a daunting task. I'm happy you didn't tell me that till now. Good. If, Good. I, if I would have known that earlier, I might actually try to be entertaining. I think I think what we need to do, like what one of our our network roundtables is just going to be like you and Je- like Jesse just at the table asking you to tell stories. Well, I I still would like to and, do and reminisce about old PWX. I still would like to do the sequel to uh, Women with Waffles, where we call it Bacon with Broadcasters. Yep, where I just eat breakfast foods while telling Jim Lamata how worthless he is. Mm. Uh, I think that 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 get over great. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's the programming that. Uh, uh, most people have, have clamored to see and others don't know they need it until they're watching it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for supporting the show. Join us in the chat room. We will be back on <laughs> September the 18th, a Wednesday. I know we're all over the place this month. Um, because we'll, we'll be celebrating the release of DJZ Gone Wild. 48 we hours to there Orlando. Go. And we're going to ask everybody that's on the show, hey, what did you think about that? Um, do we have a guest for that And yet? everybody that says they haven't watched it, you're going to cut them off and hang up on them. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, guys. By the way, uh, one of the members of Women with Waffles uh, says in... <laughs> Is it Women with Waffles women, or Waffles with Women? Waffles with Women. Wa- w- women wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the one. Uh, she says... Can we, do Dam- can we do Danishes with Dames? See, see, when I was making the name, I was like, "What? I don't want to be disrespectful with this." And then, and then, like, I think they brought up bacon with bitches or something. So, and I was like, "Well, I should have just went." With Wait, that. they get bacon too, or no, what's left for me? No, they didn't get bacon, but they were really insistent that the next time there's bacon. These superstars have demand. You get Katie Arquette in here, Hollywood starlet she is. All mm-hmm. these demands. Mm-hmm. And Jinx, and Jinx, whatever her name is, and, and now... And Jinx, whatever her name <laughs> is. <laughs> and, and, I don't uh, want to be disrespectful to whoever her name is. It's late. I didn't remember it. Uh, Ziggy Haim. You're the one bringing badgers in here. That's right. No, Have you seen didn't. my badger? It's on Instagram. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.